Hi everyone, Nathan here with ATC Cooling and Heating, and today we're going to talk about how to vent your high efficiency furnace, boiler, or water heater. Plus, we'll talk about a couple of the most common problems. First, a high efficiency gas or propane furnace, boiler, or water heater is notable because it has an efficiency rating of 90% or more. Under that level, and the venting requirements are much different, but at 90% plus, the unit has captured so much of the heat from combustion that the remaining fumes can safely be vented, usually through PVC pipe. Of course, the best way to confirm this is to check your installation manual. All right, with that settled, let's look at size. PVC venting pipes are commonly two inches or three inches. Some people even use two and a half. The choice depends on the size of the furnace and the length of the pipe. Larger units, 100,000, 120,000 BTUs, and longer venting pipes, well, those require three inch pipe. There will be a chart in the installation manual helping you to decide. For example, I looked up a train furnace and found a chart. Here, I'll put it on the screen for you. The 65,000 BTU model requires a three inch pipe for a length of, for example, 85 feet. That includes adding 10 feet for each elbow used. Follow the chart closely. Out of the furnace, the pipe connections are only two inches, which means you must upsize the three inches immediately. Next, let's talk about one pipe or two pipes. Each high efficiency unit will have connections for two pipes. One pipe is the exhaust, and the other is the intake or combustion air. As a furnace burns fuel, natural gas or propane, it combines the fuel with air to create combustion. The spent fumes are then exhausted outside the home. So what goes out must also come in. And for many situations, the manufacturer will require both pipes connected to the outside. Now exceptions can often be made for installations in, for example, a ventilated attic or a crawl space. But closets, small basements, those will always require both pipes to be connected to the outside. And really, this is an area that I commonly see ignored. Uh, imagine your furnace in the basement, a finished basement, for example, and as your furnace exhausts air, well, it's sucking air in too, and that air undoubtedly comes from outside. It has to, ultimately. It comes through the cracks and the holes in your walls. If the furnace is running, there is a good chance that the outside air is going to be cold. And who wants that? It just makes your home less efficient. Now there's a calculation used to determine if you have enough free area around your furnace to do away with the second pipe. And that amounts to 50 cubic feet of free area per 1,000 BTUs of your equipment there. Now that free area applies to all of the appliances. Furnace, water heater, the dryer, all of them, you need to add them up, measure your free space, the connected space, and see if it works. But in any case, you will never be wrong to pipe the combustion air from outside alongside your vent. Use the same chart as your vent for the size of the pipe. If it's three inches for the vent, it'll be three inches for combustion air. Now, a note on dryers. Clothes dryers, even if they're electric, they exhaust a whole lot of air. At about 200 CFM, that's the equivalent of a 175,000 BTU furnace. Don't forget to add that one in too. Let's do a little math and I'll show you how that works. I was recently at a home that had two furnaces and a clothes dryer in the basement. Furnace number one, 100,000 BTUs. Furnace number two, 60,000 BTUs. And we're using 175,000 BTUs as the equivalent for the dryer for how much air it exhausts. You add that together, we're at 335,000 BTUs. Multiply 335 times 50 cubic feet per thousand BTU, and we know that we need 16,750 cubic feet. Now, if the ceiling in that area was eight foot, divide by eight, now we have almost 2,100 square feet of free area required to run those three appliances. If it's not that big, and it wasn't, then what you need to do is pipe the combustion air in on those furnaces from outside. Where you terminate your exhaust is a really big deal too. Again, the manufacturer will have a chart in the manual showing you the clearances to different things. And this is the minimum distance to things like, for example, an operable window. An inoperable window, a closed window that doesn't open, well, the answer to that is zero. 
But the US and Canada, for example, will have slightly different rules to different terminations. Your state and local codes may also be different. So, for example, the US code says 12 inches to a window that operates. That's the distance between the vent and the window. Whereas your local code, what we have here in Tennessee, for example, says three feet, considerably larger distance between the window and your vent. Find the chart, use the chart, and be aware of your local codes. All right, now let's talk about pitch. This is important because a high efficiency unit takes so much of the heat out of the fumes so that the exhaust cools and then condenses. The moisture laden air just can't hold that much water at lower temperatures. So the water will drain down the pipe to the condensate drain on the unit. Here's the thing. Water will only flow downhill. And you want it to end up at the unit where it's designed to be and then out the condensate drain. And if your pipe doesn't pitch correctly and it goes up and down or sags, you're going to have a problem. You want it to go up and out so that that water drains down the bottom of the pipe and into the unit and then from there down the designed condensate drain. If on the other hand something happened, it was installed wrong, and you have a sag in your pipe, guess where the water is going to end up? It will pool right here and the unit will sense a blockage in the pipe because it can't push air through the water puddle and it will turn it off. In the same way, you also don't want your pipe to go like this outside because water will form here and dribble down the outside of that and then end up freezing on the outside of your pipe. That will also block your pipe. There are really only a couple of other things to say about venting your high efficiency unit and those are some of the obvious things. For example, make sure that your piping is well supported. Make sure you use the appropriate glue and that things are fastened together well. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not that complicated, but do indeed pull out the instruction manual and read through that before you attempt a vent of a high efficiency unit. Now, if you have any questions about venting or really about anything HVAC, just leave us a comment here or connect with us at atcservice.com. Thanks for watching.